There's a lot of people that know about God that don't know God. Amen. And there's a lot of people that know about, about the power of God. If you deal with you know, Azusa and you deal with history, then a lot of people, they know the history of the Bible. They know the historic Jesus. They know about Noah. And they know about Moses. But they haven't experienced anything. Amen. You see, and in your life, God brings you through a series of events called trials. Don't you love those? Yeah. I sure don't. I'm glad y'all said yes. <laughs> but you know why? Because God allows you to go through things. To do what? To reveal to you another attribute of his character. Amen. I can say God is a healer, but do I know it? Yeah. I don't know God is a healer until he heals. Right. And when he heals me, I'm not telling you something that I don't know. I'm telling you something that I experience. Yeah. So God allows you to go through a series of events to reveal to you different parts of his character. So that you no longer talk about God, but you talk for God. Yeah. And so God is not always fast to take you out of what you're crying about. Okay, I'm not in trouble. He's going to leave you there. Because some of you got to mature. And some of us have to grow up. And some of us have to realize your time on this earth is short. Too short for you to be selfish. Too short for you to live for yourself. You got a short amount of time to do what? To fulfill the will of God in your life. This is what you're here for. Because this part right here is just temporary. When you cross over, that's eternal. I'm working towards something. I'm going somewhere. And the enemy wants to block you from destiny. So we're always walking around not knowing who we are and not thinking that we're good enough. And when, we do, when he does that, we always come up short. And there's a lot of people that believe in God, but they don't believe in themselves. And that's how come when, you, when, when, when pastor's talking about young people, do you want to know why the devil attacks you when you're young? Because it's easier for him to pull up a plant than to chop down a tree. He has to deal with you when you're little. Why do you think the devil done possessed leadership when Jesus was born to kill him when he couldn't defend himself? Come, come. He said, well, get him when we're a baby. We'll get him when we're a baby. We'll throw them babies in the Nile. That's what he's always done. Why? So that he always has this little hold in your life. And you know, and it's amazing because somebody can do one thing to you. 25 years ago, 30 years later, you're still crying about it. But God done spoke to you 50 times letting you know that you're more than a conqueror, but you won't believe that. But you're still crying about what somebody did. And a lot of times... We come to church and we need something, but we won't say nothing. And then we're like, well, God, how come, how come you, 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 how come you passed me by? Why didn't you prophesy to me? Why didn't you have somebody pick me up? God said, I ain't doing none of that. You're too old for that. I gave you a mouth. Say something. You want something? Say something. You, you don't think that Jesus knew what people, <laughs> blind brother man says yelling, what do you want? You don't think Jesus knew what he wanted? He's going to make you say it. God's going to make you say it. But a lot of times we don't want to say it because we don't want to identify what the problem is. We don't want to admit to ourselves we got a problem. We got a struggle. So God, if he loves you, will position you to a place, push your back to a corner to make you say what you need. Come on now. You can't get rid of it if you don't identify it. What did he say? Say to the mountain. Recognize that it's there. Recognize that it's unmovable. Recognize there's nothing and speak to it. How does it feel when you can't do what you were created for? She's discouraged. She's heartbroken because I cannot produce what I was designed to produce and I can't say nothing. And there's a whole lot of people that you live your life less than the fullness of your God potential and you know it. You got dreams in you that never came to pass. You got books in you that you never wrote. You got songs in you that you never sung. You got businesses in you that God wants to birth to do what? To finance the kingdom of God. But we won't say nothing. But how discouraging to have all this vision, all of these dreams, and not be able to bring it to pass. Tell your neighbor I was created for more than just this. Somebody better hear what I'm saying in the Holy Ghost. They said, you know, Burke Clinton used to say the wealthiest place on earth is the graveyard because it's filled with dreams that men never birthed. And a lot of times, that's why you got to be careful because you can't tell everybody everything. Look at your neighbor and say, I know he's saying that right. Because there's a whole lot of people that will sabotage your dream before it ever comes to pass because they're jealous that theirs never came to pass and they're going to 
don't make sure yours don't come to pass either. So the Bible says if you got faith, keep it to yourself. And so I'm pregnant. Tell your neighbor that's fun. The first month. Wish I had a woman in here had a baby say, you know he preaching now. The first month is cute. But I'm pregnant. Look at the picture. My wife showed me the picture. She said, look at the picture. Isn't it cute? I said, it looked like a scrambled egg. You sure? You sure that's a baby? Second month looked like a tadpole. I said, the devil is alive. I can try to get the eyes to come back. I said, what is right there? I over here, Jesus, help this child. You know what happened? Let me help you. My wife was changing. Her whole body didn't have to be pregnant. Only one part of her body. Amen. Had to be able to receive a seed. I wish I could go here. Because the reason, Pastor, a lot of a lot of churches can't birth nothing is because they lack the ability to get pregnant. And so we keep miscarrying because we can't hold nothing. And some of us we talk too much. Or we let the enemy come in and abort what God put in our lives. But you got to learn how to hold what the Holy Ghost gives you until you can see it with your own eyes. And that's why the Bible says that Mary said not a word, but she pondered in her heart all those things. But all the while there was something growing on the inside that was going to overcome the very gates of hell. You better high five your man and say, I'm carrying something tonight that's about to change this world. Let me help you. Let me help you. Can I, can I go here? Because I got time, right? You know, because my wife bought me these colognes and she, oh, she loved them. I was praying myself. Oh, she'd be all over me like a beautiful You know, I use that often. Come on now. Bless her in disguise. And when she got pregnant, she was like, what is that mess? That's the love of cologne you want me that you adore. That smell like trash. Take that out. It's making me nauseated. I feel like throwing up. You want to know why? Because she was more sensitive than she was before. Because now she's carrying something. When she was empty, she can handle anything. She can smell anything. But now that she's carrying something, the thing she used to be able to handle, she can't handle it no more. So I'm pregnant now. So I'm more sensitive. I used to be able to eat anything. But now that I'm pregnant, I can't eat that no more. Because I'm carrying something. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not that I don't like you. Y'all better say it like, y'all, like I just said it. Say, it's not that I don't like you. I just can't eat everything you're saying anymore. I can't handle your gossip no more. I'm carrying something. The things I used to do, I can't do them no more. The places I used to go, I can't go there no more. The people I used to talk about, I can't talk about them no more. I'm carrying something. She's pregnant. She's carrying something now. And so now I got to Defend the life. Because what I do is going to affect what I carry. And so now she's going through some changes and something starts to happen to her body. Tell your neighbor starts to expand. Bones start moving. Organs start shifting. Pastor, how come you how come you took me out of that ministry? No, it's not a demotion. The body just shifted. Y all, y all. You can't do that no more because the body shifted and now we got organs over here and organs over here to make room for this. So you get mad because God moved you out of something 
And God said, no, I didn't take you out of the body. I just shifted you because of a life that just came in. And so now God says the body has to accommodate the ministry. It is not the other way around. Your joints have to shift. The blood vessels have to shift. Why? Because the new life has to connect to the body. And every joint of the body has now got the supply to the vision. Amen. That is being carried inside of the church. Tell your neighbor that come with pain. Well, I know that ain't popular. Somebody said, I want a painless life. And you act like it was so good out there, huh? Yeah. Because before my wife was pregnant, you called her to get up. She got up quick. Ah! She was ready to go. Eight months you called her. Ah. Oh, ah. Right? And she didn't have to walk around and been telling people she was pregnant. You got to do that in the beginning, right? But check me out in six months. Don't got to tell nobody you're pregnant. Hit your neighbor say they're going to see it for themselves. Come on, when you really got something from God, it will reveal itself. You ain't got to pump yourself up. You ain't got to tell people how good you are. You ain't got to put everything you did for God on Facebook. Come on here, somebody. They're going to see the growth for themselves. Tell your neighbor, everything starts with a thought. But a thought in your head will die there. Come on. Come on. Did you hear what I said? Come on. Until you're able to push it out. Come on. Okay, let me help you because see them lights right there? That 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 that, that wasn't always. That was somebody's thought. That's right. That's right. And somebody pushed it out and you benefit from it. Come on. This microphone wasn't always, they just yelled. But this mic right here was a thought that somebody birthed. Everything that you have around you was a thought in somebody's mind that they pushed out for you to experience from the shoes on your feet to the car you drive to the clothes you wear to the chair that you're sitting on. Everything was a thought, amen, that God gave man access to, amen, that when you're able to grab a hold of it, believe it, and fight for it, you have the ability to push it out. Look at your neighbors and what's in you? Because a lot of people think, I don't have nothing to offer. That's a trick of the devil. I have nothing to give. That's a trick of the enemy. And so now she's pregnant. She can't see that baby right away. But all of a sudden, she starts feeling pains. Woo! Anybody felt some pains? Yeah. Braxton Hicks. The little ones that's tricking you. That's preparation for the real thing. It's preparation for the real thing because God is positioning you for greatness. And that comes with a certain amount of pain. The pain to do what? Because God makes you so uncomfortable that you're willing to push out what's in you. See, because for a while, a woman can adore that baby. Take pictures of it. It's really cute. The belly, the whole nine yards. When that thing about come full turn, whoo, I'm ready to get this watermelon out. He makes her ready. Ready to do what? Ready to go through the pain and the process that is about to take, but he puts her in a position that she's willing to push until she sees it. There's, see, a lot of times we think that when God does something in our lives, it ain't going to hurt. But there are some things that you're going to go through in life. It's going to come out with pain. It's going to come out with struggle. It's going to come out with some screaming and some yelling. Some all night prayer meetings. But God told me to tell you. If you're willing to push. You're going to see your miracle. If you're willing to push. You're going to see your breakthrough. If you're willing to push. You're going to see your son. You're going to see your daughter. If I'm not willing to push it out, it's going to kill me and it. And so I got to be willing to push. And so when you're dealing with, with birth, it comes into this word breakthrough. In order for this thing to come forth, 
It's got to break through your flesh. Wow. Did you hear what I just said? So it's going to hurt because it's going to split your flesh open because your flesh cannot get glory in what God is about to do in your life. And if you're willing to rip your flesh, you better hear what I'm saying. Jesus said you'll never be healed if I don't rip my flesh and they don't tear my back. There'll never be power. So now we come to church and he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't wear a mask. I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying you shouldn't get the vaccine. I'm not saying you should. That's according to your faith. Do what you got to do to make yourself feel safe. That is not what I'm saying. Please don't get me wrong. What I am saying is there is a power greater than COVID-19. What I am saying is a power that will heal you of cancer. What I'm telling you, find that eyes still open. But I'm telling you, a deaf ear is still loose. People still got a wheelchair. People still get filled with the Holy Ghost. Demons still get casted out. Young men and women still talking tongues. And the power of the Holy Ghost is still moving on the earth realm. What I'm telling you is, we have not begun in the spirit to follow the flesh now. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil ain't scared of you. Say so you're scared of the blood. Did you hear what I just said? He's not scared of you. What are you scared of? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, because when you don't know what to do, and tell your neighbor when you don't know what to say, tell your neighbor the blood speaks. Do I have a minute? Can I go science on you? Can I go biology on you? Because scientists don't understand the blood because the blood has a communication that they can't figure out. They don't know how come when you get hurt, your white blood cells get called blood cells from every other part of the body to gather together to defend you from sickness. They don't understand the language that the blood speaks. And when they need help, they just gotta call for help. And the white blood cells take a ride through the veins and travel around the body till it hits the part that hurts the most. But science will tell you, in an extreme emergency, they don't ride on the veins, they walk through the bones. Tell your neighbor the blood speaks. God said to Cain, I know you killed Abel because I heard his blood speak from the ground. And then we go on in the New Testament and it's that the blood of Jesus speaking better things than that of Abel. When you don't know what to say, the blood speaks. When you don't know what to pray, the blood speaks. When you don't know what to do, the blood speaks. The prevailing blood of the Lamb. You better praise him in here. You better shout him in here. You better go praise him in here. Praise him for your miracle. Praise him for your breakthrough. Praise him for your deliverance. Holy, I'm holy for you. 